Hi guys, so today I'd like to talk about the second subcategory of the first part of the book, namely attacking the opponent's king when it's castled on the same side as you are. They talk about five different ways of attacking that position. First of all, they mention that it's usually better to to use your your officers instead of your pawns because if you push your pawns too eagerly then you might get wrecked because you're weakening your own king side too much your own king position of course you can do that if the center is closed then it's it's better to to use your pawns or it's 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 more sensible to use your pawns but even in that case you might want to use your officers more so the five ways of attacking the the king that's on the same side like in this position for example um, one is a pawn rush which maybe not the best second is breaking the opponent's pawn structure with a sacrifice the third one is weakening the pawn structure somehow for example forcing a weakness you know putting pressure on g g7 um, or h7 or f7 that might make your opponent to play g6 and in that case well, this is not a good example because he's got this nice bishop here. But then you can attack g6. And also these squares are a little bit weaker. And then there's this diagonal that you can also use for attack. So you've kind of already achieved your goal. You've weakened the opponent's position. And if you can make him play, let's say, h6, then... You only have to push your b-pawn to b6 and it will already be attacking your opponent's king position. Whereas if his pawn is still on h7, then you have to push your pawn all the way to g6 to attack it. So those are a few things to take into consideration. A fourth way is by using files or diagonals. A fifth way is to kind of round up um, on, on the opponent's king. So you might travel all the way from the queen side and then gradually attack the king side. Another thing I'd like to say about the uh, opposing castling, I read that subcategory to the end is that if your opponent has pieces awkwardly placed uh, on the side that you're attacking you can gain tempos uh, against those pieces and then you win valuable time and also they talked about some pawn structures like this it's it's slightly weaker than for example having the pawns on a7 and b7 which i already talked about a little bit today but I'd like to show an example of of this. Um, I think it's it's about the first category. It's about a pawn rush, and here this is a game. White is Capablanca, and black is um, Ilyin Genevsky. And here, Capablanca violates a basic strategic principle. He just initiates a pawn rush on the king side um, while the center is far from being closed. There's really no justification for him to start a pawn rush. Sure, he has played this kind of king's Indian attack type of position where usually white attacks on the king side, but it's just way too early. Uh, 
let's let's see what happens g4 by white rook to d8 this is a pretty cunning move uh, what 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 black is going to do here he's making way for his bishop to protect f8 also after that he's going to play his knight from d7 to f8 so it protects h7 so then both of these um, possible attacking targets would be protected so that's why he moved rook 8 to d8 now we see f4 by white and now bishop to e8 g5 by white it looks pretty scary for black but black is really calm right here f5 now we see b5 we see knight to f4 b4 f6 by white a pawn sacrifice um here black shouldn't take the pawn because if pawn takes we have knight to d5 and white's threats become quite dangerous already so instead black just played bishop to f8 now we have knight f2 pawn takes c3 and e6 black is shutting down the king position now there's really only one weakness left the h7 and Capablanca attacks it immediately h4 rook to b8 black has a nice b file let's see how he's able to use it h5 rook to b8 he's even going to double it seems h takes g6 h takes g6 and we have knight to d1 this move has a couple of purposes because white wants to move his king to the h file this knight is needed to protect c3 and this entry point b2 also it moves away so that this queen can use this second rank after knight to d1 we have knight to e5 just trying to control the center this is typical also in the sicilian uh, defense for black to place his knight to this central e5 square um, queen to f2 so white is going to h4 now knight goes to g4 nicely forking these two pieces and now black doesn't take e3 because then we would have knight takes e3 let's say queen takes c3 um, I think I missed a move here um, no now we would have knight to g4 and a very scary check from h6 so that's why black rather plays knight c to e5 here so he's going to have another knight on g4 soon he just keeps that knight ready so this other knight can't join the attack so knight c to e5 d4 okay now knight takes e3 knight takes e3 and queen takes c3 notice how there's no knight g4 at the moment however white could capture black's knight but black's queen is also hitting white's knight so black is just making this counter attack on the uh, queen side and also white's center doesn't look very strong so white's attack better work quickly otherwise black is just going to dominate the board
So queen takes c3, now we see pawn takes e5, queen takes e3, and king h1. Apparently king h2 was better, white would have had some attacking chances left, but now just d takes e5, opening another file. So now rook f3, and it seems like white has the situation under control. He's down two pawns, but perhaps he wants to play his king to g3 or something, double on the h file, or even just play this rook here and threaten mate. But now what black does is he just takes this knight and is willing to sacrifice his queen. So white takes that queen and plays queen to e1. Rook b2. Black doubles on the second file, second rank, sorry. Bishop f3, c5, c4, bishop to d6, and if white plays e5 here, then the bishop is just gonna recycle itself to this diagonal, and it's going to be just as destructive. So white played queen to a7 here. But black just played c3, and this is where white resigned. Let's see what white was really threatening here. I guess rook h2 would have been even better, but if black plays something silly, um, white doesn't really have any threats. Um, he can take this pawn, rook e1, he's still lost, so actually rook h2 was even better, king h1, rook h3, where does this bishop go? If bishop g2, now it's pinned and lost, it really looks bad for white. So I think that was a nice example of of an attack that wasn't really justified. It, it looked scary, but black defended really well and even made some sacrifices, which was very popular in the uh, uh, 50s and 60s when this, this game was probably played. So... Anyway, I hope you got some ideas on how to attack the king on the same side. Thanks for watching.